Hi, it's digital microscope time. I'm quite excited about this one. You know how I've had the uh, Tagano microscope for uh, many years now, and I've been doing uh, like all of my video microscope work under the Tagano microscope, and it's fantastic. But the problem is it's very expensive. It's like, I think, maybe $4,000 worth of kit. Now, this is why I was quite excited over on my EEV Blog 2 channel, which I'll link in down below. And at the end, if you haven't seen it, and you should, be subscribed to EEV Blog 2 because that's where I upload uh, lots of extra content and stuff. I saw a new digital microscope from Suba Engineering, which is an Australian company, and its performance was absolutely awesome. I was a bit, bit blown away by it, and it was like 1800 Australian dollars with a monitor. And the impressive part about it is, I don't know if you can see that, but it has like a focus square in there, and if you move things around, I can just tilt this board like this, and things will come into, magically come into focus like that. So regardless of the uh, tilt of the board, you want to look at the edge of the board? Well, there it is. No problems whatsoever. Want to go right down the bottom? There it is. And Super Engineering said that they had actually developed this themselves, even though it was made in China. But then somebody in the EV blog forum saw this and went, nope. I've had one of those cameras for like a year or something like that. It has exactly the same menu system like this version 2.29 and uh, I don't know the name of the built-in uh, software you know it doesn't have any about system or anything like that I don't know if they developed it but uh, Eakins or E Eakins uh, brand camera and they said here it is you can buy it on AliExpress for 460 US dollars so I was <laughs> went well I'm gonna nab one of those that's cheaper than 1800 Australian bucks let's check it out it seems to be absolutely identical to the uh, Suba engineering one now you have to be very careful which one you actually buy because uh, Eakins make uh, or sell a lot of different uh, models so I'll link it in uh, down below 460 US dollars I think it's a bit over 500 but it's on sort of special I guess they have like permanent uh, specials on AliExpress and it's got uh, HDMI out uh, which goes directly to your monitor it's got a USB which uh, you plug the supplied mouse into uh, just to control the on-screen uh, stuff and it's also got a micro SD card that you can record video on and 5 volts USB I'm just powering it from a uh, battery pack on here and it's got a sony imx 290 sensor in it and it's uh full hd at uh, 60 frames per second and it's got a uh, c-mount adapter on there as well for uh, any c-mount lens and it's an auto focusing camera you can actually see the sensor moving in and out there yeah it's an auto focus system which goes right back in there so very nice you can just buy the uh, camera on its own uh, this particular package they do sell other lenses but this is a uh, nominal uh, 180 times uh, lens and we'll uh, check this in a minute on a normal 24 inch output monitor and it's like uh, generic branded so I'm not sure what could be their own brand or they're sourcing it from somewhere who knows where they're getting it from I'm not sure what diameter that is but you could uh, add uh, protectors or other um, things to the front and by looking at my Suba engineering video, it looks to be the same lens, but of course Suba have designed their own uh, like enclosure around the thing. But I'm not going to say it's absolutely identical, but it's pretty darn close. This doesn't seem to be the exact same camera model that's used on the Suba engineering one. Because if you have a look at the video, it's actually got the uh, micro SD card on the side. So maybe they've got a slightly different model or haven't had it customized for them anyway as uh, far as I can tell it's exactly the same firmware and works um, and the performance seems to be identical now the stand is about uh, 55 60 US dollars extra and I'm not a huge fan of it the beveled uh, edge here which uh, stops it from pivoting that doesn't uh, go in place properly and it's a bit how you're doing um, generally but it's good enough because once you've actually set up your distance here which for this particular lens is about 100 millimeters you don't really need to touch this at all because it, it'll just automatically um, focus from flat right up to the maximum height of this thing so you don't have to really adjust that any further at all there it is we're right on the edge of that uh, PCB now very nice so whilst I don't really like it 
it's you know it's good enough for the money so how do you adjust this well what you do is you set it to maximum zoom like this and then you tweak the physical level of it until it's going to focus in like that and for this particular lens as i said it's around about a hundred millimeters basically anything within that height range there is going to uh, be automatically uh, focused by the camera itself up here. And that's what the great thing about it, traditional digital ones, you really have to dick around with the height of these things and you don't have to do that here, it's great. But that being said, I didn't realize until after I bought this that actually uh, there's three different lenses available for this. And if we zoom out all the way there, you can see that's about 19 millimeters uh, maximum field of view there. And uh, the monitor here is uh, 533 across. So 533 divided by 19, that gives us a zoom of uh, 28. So that's the minimum zoom on a nominal 24 inch monitor here and maximum zoom just under three millimeters so 533 divided by three ta-da 177 zoom and they class this uh lens that they supply as a times 180 lens so they must be referring to a, a reference in that to a 24 inch monitor you know if you're just doing general purpose soldering this is not, I'm not saying this is not the right camera for you. It likely is because it's excellent, but it's not the right lens for you. You need the uh, wider angle, uh, less zoom lens. So I highly recommend if you're going to get it, get the set of uh, three lenses. They're pretty cheap, like 50 bucks. So as I said, the great thing about this is that we can go from having our board flat like that to tilting it right up at a ridiculous angle like that go from the zoom down there, and then we can go right up to the top of the board, straight onto that connector there. Like, absolutely beautiful. Um, almost any tilt angle like that is everything can come within focus, and this is great for visual inspection of PCBs. Let me show you. PCB going around here, everything's looking hunky-dory, right? No worries, can't find any problems. Oh, let's tilt our board, shall we? Wah, gotcha. Look at that, and then we can go from the top of the, these pins right up here, and we can just inspect anything. We can have a look at those parts there, and bingo, gotcha, tombstone. So you can do that with other uh, microscopes, of course, but you've usually got to like dick around with the height and everything just to get the right focus range and all that. With the autofocus in the camera here and a re like a good uh, depth of focus range like this has probably got to be like 80 uh, millimeters. It depends on the uh, the zoom level, but so I really have to get the uh, other lenses for this, and I'll have to do a follow up on uh, EV Blog Two. I'll order them at a larger uh, field of view for more general use, but and we can get the uh, high, even higher magnification again than this one. This one's already pretty uh, extreme lens, and then we have a greater working distance uh, yet again. But 100 millimeters here, that's more than enough to get your iron under, and even a large board like this to actually bend that under and actually get things uh, all in zooms. Now, unfortunately, the HDMI output on this, I can't capture it with my AVIO uh, 4K capture card. I don't know why, I don't know what the deal is, and the built-in video recording function of this, it kinda, sorta works. Um, you know, you go up here and you put your SD card in and you hit video and it works, but it, it's a dot uh, H264 extension, but none of my video editors can import it. It's basically pretty shitty video recording functionality. So, and maybe there's something, I don't know what the deal is with the HDMI. So it comes with a mouse, you plug it into the USB, and we go up here, and we've got the, this drop-down menu system, and we're running uh, version 2.29. I don't know what happens with, you know, firmware updates and uh, stuff like that. Find out the crosshair feature is basically absolutely useless. You can't, like, scroll them on here. You've got to go up here, and you can move them. There's no measurement capability. It's just, it's just garbage. I don't know why they even bothered. It'd be nice to have, you know, calibration measurement functionality and stuff like that, but we don't. Anyway, so the thing we're interested in is this uh, AFROI, or Autofocus Region of Interest. And you can see our large rectangle around there. We can actually make that smaller, like this, if you want a smaller focus area. And one of the problems with uh, having it in the center like this is that uh, when you get your soldering iron in there, it'll start to focus hunt. If you're soldering in the middle, that can be a problem. So you're probably going to want to go up 
and set manual focus if you're just doing uh, general soldering like that. If you want, you can actually move the square around your region of interest over there and you can just move it around the screen horizontally and vertically. So that's all right and we can only set uh, small or large but that's more than good enough. And you can muck around with the other settings, exposure and stuff like that. You can get manual exposure, but I find the auto exposure works brilliantly. And, uh, you know, manual white balance, you can tweak all the colours if you want. And FBL, I'm not sure what uh, that is, but it just goes all the way with LBJ, all the way out like that. And, and we can capture uh, to a JPEG. As I said, re clunky record video. We can actually uh, mirror it like that, and we can flip it. And HDR, it does actually support high dynamic range. And I see a bit of a difference there, but I'm not, not exactly sure. Not a huge difference. Black and white and uh, 50, 60 hertz uh, filtering if for a uh, flicker filtering if you want that. So there you go. It's a pretty simplistic menu system, but it works. But I would have liked to have seen like especially like manual and autofocus you might use all the time for example would have liked to have seen like buttons on here um that you know could do some of the basic uh, functionality in the menu system that that would have been nice anyway so what we're looking at here is tiny little uh, mobile phone board that part in those parts there in the center they're 0402s and these little tiny jobs here these are 0201s so we can zoom right in on those 0201s not even zoomed all the way in it gets a bit trickier you wouldn't you know you wouldn't ever use that as a working sort of like uh distance it's just way too close because you can't see your eye and come in you know that's like plenty if you're working on uh, even wider even that's just uh fine if you're working on 0201 so even smaller parts than that no issue whatsoever and the uh and the frame rate because this is uh 60 frames per second so the lag on this is just great and we can just get in there and just remove our little 0201 part right there. But you saw the uh, focus hunt in there. I should have uh, put on manual focus for that. But, and I can tell you it's absolutely as good, if not better, than the uh, Tagano uh, at the uh, 60 frames per second and the image clarity and everything else. The Sony sensor in it works fantastic. Although I do have my additional... Uh, light here on the side so i can switch that off and just have my studio lights maybe you can see a bit of like a uh, video noise on there but not much it's a pretty decent sensor now i would prefer to have a larger depth of field shallow depth of field you only have to go one or two pins out and they start being uh, out of focus so of course but it's got a standard uh, c mount lens so um, you can install your own lenses and uh, have a play around with it from that aspect. You're basically buying into the camera uh, technology, not so much the lens. So although it's not designed for it, let's have a look at a wafer under this thing. Let's zoom right into the center. There you go. AT&T SRAM. <laughs> Vintage, anyone? Coupons and test structures outside the die. But yeah, it's not a die inspection microscope, but it, it's certainly... Uh, does pass muster for that um, and of course you can get it at even higher magnification zoom than this one but as i said the stock lens that's a standard um so8 again that's the biggest field of view so yeah really just for general purpose soldering you wouldn't be using this lens you would get the uh wider angle one definitely so let's just do a comparison with the tagano here's like i've got the board near vertical like that and there you go we can see some uh, layers in the board there and then immediately drop back down to those individual parts. There's absolutely no contest in terms of the field of view. I mean, look at the <laughs> massive field of view we got there. And we got the digital uh, zoom. Can't be beat. But we're not using... It's not really an apples to apples comparison here. Because we've got a much higher zoom uh, lens here, as we'll see. That is the maximum zoom we can do on the uh, Tagano. I, I got the same light for both of them, haven't got the internal light on the Tagano. I'd say the Tagano is actually a little bit noisier. I can turn the internal light on and the noise goes away a bit. You can see, like, we obviously can't get the same zoom range, but of course, the, the Tagano, it's no contest in terms of like. For me, as a video blogger, I'm not going to give up my Tagano. It's just way too good in terms of uh, what I need for video production and uh, stuff like that with the smooth zoom, where you can't get that 
with this like you've just got to manually dick around with it and stuff like that it's not as nice doesn't have as wide a range as the uh, Tagano so not even close in that respect can't get on the end of the board and of course we don't have that focus box that is so good there we go we can maybe do that if you want to like inspect components up close there's really no contest the uh, Ekans is is an absolute winner it just kills the Tagano, but for just, you know, general, like a wider angle soldering, you know, the Tagano is still impossible to beat. Anything else, but they're both full HD, 60 frames per second, latency is the same between them. And one of the problems I've had with the Tagano is doing exactly this, like inspection. That's the most I can zoom in, 40 times optical zoom. And I'm tilting the board, that's at 45 degrees, and I cannot get that chip there to focus so the focus range and depth of field of the Tagano is not nearly as good as what it is on the Econ so yeah they're really almost two different beasts in that respect the, at this point what was it 19 that is where the zoom level of the Econ starts whereas this is almost where the Tagano ends so really with this particular out of the box times 180 lens they're, they are completely different uh, beasts. And if you're curious to know, it draws about uh, 3.9 watts or thereabouts. So you can, like I've been using this for, you know, a couple of hours now. And I'm barely down to, you know, not even down to the first bar of my battery pack. So yeah, it's quite usable from just a uh, USB battery bank. Sweet. So is this thing a Tagano killer? Well, yes and no. In terms of the actual uh, camera itself, the video performance, uh, the full HD at 60 frames per second, and the uh, low noise, low light uh, performance is as good, if not better, than the Tagano, which is still less than like one-fifth the price of the Tagano, even on uh, special, I think. But the Tagano is much better in that it has the electronic, the separate zoom control you can have on your bench and you can just go zoom up, zoom down. I've got mine like on the leg of my bench and I use that. So for my specific niche uses, the Tagano is still better, except I'll be definitely using this uh, to capture any like inspection stuff because the Tagano just can't do it nearly as well as this one does. There's just no contest. The Tagano will view this entire board under there. I've got no chance in hell of viewing this entire board under here. And the Tagano is like uh, 250 to 300 millimeters working distance. So in that aspect, like there's no contest, but for the price, this is absolutely incredible. I don't know of anything that can beat it. I'm, I'm just thoroughly, thoroughly impressed by this. It's uh. It's a winner winner chicken dinner it really is um so if you're in the market for a uh, uh inspection uh microscope um but as i said buy all three lenses with it definitely but it's an absolute winner and i definitely give it a uh, thumbs up so if you want to check it out i'll provide the link to uh, aliexpress down below just be careful they sell lots of different models you have to get this specific one with the autofocus uh feature in it so yeah don't get confused a lot of them look uh, very similar so i don't even know the model number of this thing i got no idea well software's a little bit clunky in the thing i'm disappointed with the video recording all that sort of stuff still have to work out the hdmi uh capture issue and I, i'll have to try another card or something definitely inspection uh type stuff it's that and really fine you know 0201 0402 surface mount soldering stuff like that it's brilliant so anyway if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. As always, uh, thank you to my patron uh, supporters who help me uh, fund me to buy uh, stuff like this so I can uh, show them off to you. And as always, you can discuss down below or over on the EV blog forum. Catch you next time. Hello.